A More Perfect Union by Betsy Maestro and Julio Maestro. 1787. Over 200 years ago, America was still a very young country. Representatives from 13 colonies met in 1776 to write the Declaration of Independence, which told King George III of England that the colonies wanted to rule themselves. The colonists formed their own government and fought the Revolutionary War to win their freedom. 10 years later, in 1786, America was in trouble. The government was not working well. Many people were poor. The 13 states were not cooperating with one another. The government had no way to raise money, and there was no president to help the states work together as one nation. The leaders of the new country were very worried and sad to see America in such trouble. They were afraid the country would fall apart if something was not done soon to make the government strong. These men decided to hold a special meeting called a convention to figure out what could be done. A few leaders from each state were invited to come to Philadelphia in May 1787. Important men began arriving in Philadelphia. George Washington and James Madison came from Virginia. Alexander Hamilton was sent from New York and Benjamin Franklin was there to speak for Pennsylvania. Many delegates stayed at the Indian Queen, one of the nicest inns. Even before the convention began, the men were talking over their ideas and plans. Nearly all of them knew one another, as some of them had helped to write the Declaration of Independence, many had fought in the Revolutionary War, and most had served in the government. Now they were all anxious to help their country again. The convention was to begin on May 14th, but most of the delegates did not arrive by that date. Travel was very slow in those days. Some of the men came long distances by horseback, carriage, or ship. The trip to Philadelphia from New Hampshire or Georgia could take two or three weeks. In addition, the weather was very bad. Finally, by May 25th, most of the delegates had arrived and the convention began. The convention took place in the State House on Chestnut Street. This building, which we now call Independence Hall, is where the Declaration of Independence had been signed 11 years before. At the very first meeting, the delegates voted to make George Washington the leader of the convention. James Madison offered to write down everything that happened during these meetings, so there would be a record of all that was said and done. Even though the convention lasted for 16 weeks, Madison did not miss a single meeting. His work was so important that he is called the father of the Constitution. When George Washington took his place at the desk on the platform, Benjamin Franklin noticed a sun carved on his chair. Franklin wondered whether it was a rising sun or a setting sun. He did not have much time to think about it, however, as the work of the convention had begun. During the next few days, the men made a set of rules to help the convention run smoothly. Some of the rules were, each state would have one vote, a majority, or more than half the votes would rule, and everything that happened at the meetings would be kept secret until after the convention was over. Some of those who had arrived in Philadelphia early, including George Washington and James Madison, had come up with a plan to form a new government. Governor Edmund Randolph of Virginia presented this plan to the convention, so it became known as the Virginia Plan. The plan called for a government elected or chosen by the people. It would have three parts, a president, a Congress or group of people to make laws, and a law court to make decision about those laws. Each state would choose delegates to serve in Congress. The number of delegates from each state would depend on the size of the state. This meant that big states would have more power than small states because they would have more votes in Congress. Many of the delegates were very surprised by the Virginia plan. They thought the convention would fix up the old government, not make a new one. They had to decide, should they create a new government for America? They took a vote and the yeses won. 
Now the job of the convention would be to write a constitution, a set of rules for forming a government and another set of rules for the new government to follow. Right away, the delegates began to argue. The members from small states thought the Virginia plan was unfair. They wanted each state to have the same number of representatives. Other delegates were afraid to let the people choose the president. They felt that ordinary citizens would make a bad choice. The delegates argued for weeks. Finally, some members from the small states came up with a plan of their own called the New Jersey plan. It said that, except for some small changes, the old government was fine. The most important thing the New Jersey plan said was that all the states, no matter what their size, would have the same number of representatives. After a few days of talking, the majority voted against the New Jersey plan. The delegates from small states had lost their fight and were bitterly disappointed, but they decided to work with the other delegates to come up with a plan that would satisfy both large and small states. By mid-July, with the help of some delegates from Connecticut, a compromise was worked out. Each side had given up something it wanted in order to create a plan that both sides could accept. The plan was called the Great Compromise or the Connecticut Compromise. It was made up of some parts of the Virginia plan and some parts of the New Jersey plan and some new ideas from both sides. That summer in Philadelphia was hot and the men were very tired. Most of them took some time now for a short vacation. They saw the sights of the city and enjoyed their free days. Some of them borrowed books from the library that Benjamin Franklin had started years before. However, a small group of delegates called the Committee of Detail did not take a vacation. They gathered together all the parts of the new plan for the Constitution and wrote a first draft or working copy. When the whole group of 55 delegates returned to the convention, they were able to look over this draft of the document that would govern all the American people. On August 6th, the delegates began to examine the draft of the new constitution. Every sentence was argued, debated, and discussed by the members of the convention. By the end of the month, the delegates had agreed on almost everything. Again, the spirit of compromise saved the day. Then another committee, the Committee of Style and Arrangement, went to work. Its members rewrote the final draft, making sure that every word was just right. At last, the constitution was complete. Copies were printed and given to the delegates. On September 15th, the delegates voted to sign the new constitution. 42 members were present and only three did not agree to sign. Then the words were copied onto parchment, a very special kind of paper that lasts for a long time. On Monday, September 17th, 1787, the convention had its final meeting 39 delegates signed the new constitution. Some of the original 55 delegates had left the convention in anger because they did not approve of the new constitution. Some others would have signed, but had to return home early. The signing of the constitution was a formal ceremony. George Washington was the first to write his name. Then the other 38 men followed. Although it was a serious and important moment, it was also a very happy one. Ben Franklin commented that at last he knew for sure what kind of sun was on Washington's chair. It was a rising sun. Everyone felt this was a good sign for the rising young country. Now, all the men were anxious to get home. Many had not seen their families for months. Much hard work still lay ahead. The Constitution had to be ratified or approved in each state before it could become law. The delegates had to convince the people in their home in their home states to vote for the new Constitution. Copies were sent to all the state governments. Each of the 13 states would hold its own convention to vote. If nine of the 13 states, or a two-thirds majority, voted for the new Constitution, the new government would be set up.
Many people, people were in favor of the new constitution and many were against it. Those who didn't like it were afraid the new government would be too strong, that living in America would be much the same as living under English rule. The debates in the states went on and in December 1787, Delaware became the first state to approve the new constitution. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, and Connecticut quickly followed. Massachusetts came next in February 1788 after a very close vote in the state convention. By June, after Maryland and South Carolina had ratified, eight states had agreed to the new government. Now only one more state was needed for the new constitution to become law. On June 21st, 1788, New Hampshire voted yes. America would have a new government. The state of Virginia soon ratified as well. When July 4th came, huge celebrations were held in many cities. In New York, a big ship was pulled through the streets in a parade. In Philadelphia, there was a parade made up of 88 groups of marchers, some on floats. New York State soon accepted the new, the new Constitution. A date was set for the first election by the people of a president of the United States. George Washington was everyone's choice. He was elected by unanimous vote. On April 30th, 1789, he took the oath of office, promising to serve his country well. Finally, by May 1790, all 13 states had ratified the Constitution. Now the new nation truly could be called the United States of America. A new Congress was elected and it immediately went to work. Law courts were set up and the new government seemed strong and sound, but still some Americans worried. They believed that certain important rights of the people were not protected under the constitution. So to ease those fears, Congress proposed some additions to the constitution. The first 10 additions or amendments are known as the Bill of Rights. In part, they state that people have the right to say what they want, go where they want, and pray to God in the way they want without fear that the government will stop them. The Bill of Rights has turned out to be a very important part of the Constitution. It protects people from losing the freedom that is so much a part of American life. Over the years, 17 other amendments have been added. Our Constitution was written so that as times change, it can change to meet the needs of our growing country. Today, some 200 years after it was written, the Constitution is still the basis of American government and the American people's way of life. It is the oldest written set of rules for, for running a country still in use in the world. It created a government that has worked better and longer than any other in history. The Founding Fathers, as the authors of the Constitution are called, wrote the Constitution with the idea that the power of government should come from the people. This idea of each citizen playing a part in the government is one of the principles that makes America strong. Power from the people, protected and guaranteed by the Constitution, has kept a union of states, now grown to 50, together all these years.